I'm making a, um, a slightly less ambitious argument, which is that, um, that in some respects, uh, and, and, and maybe, like I say, this could be circular, but Obamacare um, in some way made the argument for incrementalism. Insofar as, look, it was what you could get at the time, the most you could get at the time, but what it did is it had that uh, impact where it made people aware that really healthcare should be a right, right? Which includes all those premises that you made about why should, you know, what there, there's, there's no, if it's a right, there's no logic to having, uh, you know, having it to be just out of reach from a, from a deductible standpoint or a copay standpoint or uh, just out of reach insofar as it being a universal. And I guess um, what I'm saying is, uh, does, you know, the idea of, let's say, a Medicare buy-in for everybody... Or, uh, you know, I think what uh, uh, Holland suggested was automatic enrollment in uh, a Medicare system at birth that you can only lose if it is uh, supplanted with uh, employer-based um, uh, health care or something to that uh, effect. I mean, I guess that's what I, I'm getting at is, you know, th is that litmus test. Um, it should, in your opinion... How hard and fast should that litmus test be? How much of the argument for Medicare for all should be seen as sort of a journey or a process, or should it be this is something that has to happen? This has to be the next step. I think for too long we've been going down the incremental road. I think this is the next step. I mean, what are we going to wait for? You know, we're going to do some incremental move, and then 20 years later, be back. You know, I'll be back on your show talking about this again. I mean, we need to. We we, we the, the 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 debate over healthcare reform in the United States has been going on for more than 100 years. We've tried Obamacare. It was an incremental step. It did not take us to universal health care. It um, attenuated some of the injustices of the United U.S. healthcare system. The next natural step is for national health insurance, something that people were – was in the centerpiece of the democratic platform back in the 1970s. This is a sort of rightward regression that we're having now if we're going to talk about abandoning a national health insurance program. Now, things – these sort of more aggressive forms of incrementalism that you're talking about, you're born into Medicare, for instance, but you lose it if you get a job, you know, get employer-sponsored coverage. I mean, you can talk about these arguments, but the reality is, is that something like that is going to decimate the private health insurance industry. They're going to to fight it tooth and nail as strong as they're going to fight single payer. And it wouldn't have many of the same benefits in terms of the administrative savings, uh, in terms of the system-wide drug savings. So why should we fight to, to get into this you know, death struggle with the private health insurance uh, industry over a incremental sort of step right. that's not even going to take us to where we want to be? If we're going to do that, if we're going to go all the way, then we might as well go all the way with what we want and what's the optimal solution. Now, if you take something like a very narrowly defined public option that's just available to people buying insurance on the exchanges, yeah, I mean, you might better achieve that, but it's going to affect so few people's lives. It's not going to really develop, the, a, 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 allow you to accumulate the political capital necessary to actually do much more. Right. And you, in that uh, proposal, in other words, if you're going to have a proposal that's going to have the full force of uh, opposition, you might as well offer the most obvious and uh, beneficial and politically communicatable uh, proposition that there is. Uh, why, why convolute things if you're still going to have the same level of resistance to it? I agree. I mean, imagine trying to explain the Medicare thing, buy-in thing to people. They're not going to get it. You know, they're gonna, you're gonna, you get it and you lose it if you get a job. And then what ha if you just say, no, we're going to create something like Medicare, a birthright to the U.S. healthcare system. Uh, everybody's enrolled, no co-payments, no deductibles. You can't, you don't, you know, lose it until you're dead. Uh, that's something you can actually communicate. These rather convoluted um, sorts of systems. I mean, part of the problem is they don't generate the kinds of efficiencies that we need. But even putting that side, they're not, as to use your words, politically communicatable, right? Like, how are you going to actually get that out there? Uh, this is going to be a huge fight, and we need a simple, clear, very obvious and very effective message to actually get this across. And Medicare for all means something to people. Um, and I think that it's because of that, it's a winnable battle. 
Adam Gaffney, um, the uh, we will link to your pieces in the Jacobin, uh, making uh, very similar arguments. I appreciate your coming on today uh, and taking the time. I really enjoyed the discussion. Thank you for having me. Hi, folks. Sam Cedar here. We still need your help on our Patreon page. YouTube ads have come back, but not nearly as much as we had before. So if you can help us out, any little bit helps. Head over to our Patreon page right at this URL, and you'll help us keep helping you by making videos.